Hello and welcome to this section of the Chemistry Tutor. Here we're going to continue doing redox reactions, identifying all of the elements and all of the oxidation numbers to try to figure out what is oxidized and what's reduced. So it's a skill that we need to really master. And these two problems here that I'm going to do, um, there's, there's a little twist with both of them and that's why I'm saving them for the end. Uh, they're not really harder, it's just that I'd like to expose you to a few things that you might not see you know, in a typical lecture so that when you see them on your test you're not so terrified. And let me give you those right now. So the first one is the following. The reaction would go NH4, NO2 yields N2 plus 2H2O. And so what we're trying to do as always here is we're trying to assign oxidation numbers everywhere to figure out what's oxidized and what's reduced. So typically the way you would attack this, it's a good test problem, is you would, um, you would start to assign the oxidation numbers like our method has shown. So what you would quickly figure out is that the sum of the oxidation numbers would be zero and you would go down the list and you would assign plus one for hydrogen and then you would go down the list and you would assign negative two for oxygen. And then you would try to calculate the, um, the nitrogens here because you know the sum has to be zero. But it's a little weird because nitrogen's in two places. So how do you do that? And if you try to use algebra to figure out what nitrogen is going to be, you're going to get the same number for both of these because you combine them, you know, like algebra. So I'm not going to go through that because it's just a dead end. But what I'm trying to tell you is sometimes there's a couple clues to tell you that this is not going to be fruitful. One of them is you have nitrogen in two places. That's going to be a little weird, okay, because if you try to solve for it, it's just going to give you an answer that's probably not going to make a lot of sense. The second thing is you can see that you have an NH4, which is a polyatomic ion by itself. And then you have an NO2, which is another polyatomic ion by itself. And that means that when you put this in solution and actually do the reaction, you really don't have a compound that's NH4, NO2. You don't really have that thing joined together. What you really have is NH4 ions floating around and NO2 ions floating around. So what's really going to make more sense for you to do is treat this reaction as NH4 positive ion plus NO2 negative ion. You can look these up in your table of polyatomic ions. Ammonium is going to have a plus one charge. This is going to have a negative one charge. And then you can just write the rest of the reaction out. What we've done here is really nothing different than what, what's up there. I mean, we have the same, uh, the same balancing. We have the same you know, um, number of elements everywhere. I mean, this is what's really going on when you do this reaction. But really what you have is these ions sitting, floating around separately. And now what we can do is find the oxidation number of these things separately, which is going to be a whole lot more